Hi, Brianna. Oh, hi. It's good seeing you. How have you been? Um, I've been okay. Uh, why are you here? Am I in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I'm here because I like to try something new, something different. Um, I like to bring together people in your life who are helpful and supportive to you, people who can be there for you, and get all those folks together so that we can come together in one room and plan and make decisions together. You know I hate meetings. There's all these meetings and they all make decisions about me. I know, but this would be a different kind of meeting. So first off, you would be there. The meeting would focus on you and your needs and you'd also be part of the decision making. We're calling these meetings child and family team meetings. Okay. So the purpose of the child and family team meeting is to pull together what we call your formal support, so those professionals that are in your life, and then your natural supports, your friends and family, so that over time, as the services and the professionals pull out of your life, you'll have your natural supports there to be there and help you once the services are done. All right. So the purpose of the child and family team meeting is to focus specifically on any worries that you or we may have around things like uh, behavior, mental health, or placement, stuff like that. So we can talk about those worries openly and then we'll be able to discuss them together. So do you think I'll actually have an equal say in decisions? I hope so. I'll be there leading the meeting. And so my number one priority will be to make sure that your voice is heard. Okay, I like that. Well, that's good to hear. So can we talk about who you'd like to have at the meeting? Um, well, I'd like my mom to be there. Okay. I mean, I know we haven't had the best of relationships. She's been doing drugs her whole life, and I even heard that when I was born, I had drugs in my system. Even though I only lived with her when I was a kid, lately she's really been making an effort to, you know, come back into my life. And she's been sober for two years, and she comes to visit a lot, which I like. So, do you think that she could be there? Yes, and we'll make sure to have the meeting at a time and location that works best for you and your mom. Who else would you like there? Um... How about uh, Viola, my castle worker? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I've known her for two years. She's really supportive. Um, when she found out my love for music and how I wanted to learn how to play piano, she found ways for me to get lessons and she got me a guitar, so. Cool, okay, so Viola sounds good. Who else? Um, I don't know. Well, what about if we invite your therapist, Alex, to come to the meeting? Uh, I guess, why does, why does he need to be there? Well, remember we were talking about those formal supports? So Alex is one of those people. Oh. Okay, yeah, I guess he can be there. Okay, I'd also like to invite someone from Behavioral Health. He would lend some expertise in case there are any mental health needs. The guy's name is Jack. He knows the system pretty well. And if you have any behavioral health needs, he can at least help us link you to services. Okay, yeah, I guess if you think he needs to be there, he can be there. Okay. Um, are you gonna be there? Yeah, I'll be there. Remember I'm leading the meeting? Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so we have you, me, your mom, um, Viola, your CASA representative, Alex, your therapist, and then we have Jack from Behavioral Health. Um, are there any other family or friends that you'd like to be at the meeting? Um, well, there's my Uncle Carlos, my okay. mom's brother, and his wife, um, Aunt Diana, but they don't really want anything to do with me. So. Really? What happened between you and them? Um, well, when I was born, I was put into foster care for about a year, and then my mom took me in until I was about seven. Um, when she met her boyfriend, him and her would get high together, and when they were high, they would argue and physically fight each other. Um, one day I was taken away from them and I went to live with my grandma and shortly after that my grandma passed away and I was put into like five different foster homes um, and then my uncle Carlos and my aunt Diane moved back into town and they agreed to take me in and I like living there I mean I lived there for two years and they were awesome mm -hmm. but um, my aunt caught me stealing money and smoking weed and one day I got so bad that um, me and my aunt were arguing and I pushed her and she fell and hit her head on the coffee table. My uncle had enough, he kicked me out, but I miss them and I would do anything to just get them back. Well, I'll work on getting them there to the meeting. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so what's gonna happen at this meeting? Well, first we'll do some introduction stuff um, and then I'd like for you to share, share your story, kind of like how you're sharing with me today. Okay. And I also hope that you can share what you like to get out of the meeting. Like me getting to go home with my mom? Well, you know we're working on that, but that may not be a possibility. Yeah, I know. It's not the best place for me, but I do want to get out of this group home. Well, we can definitely talk about it. Oh, okay, what else is going to happen? Well, I'm going to have everybody talk about how we're going to work together, what group agreements we'll set between one another. Okay, like me getting a voice in decisions? Yes, exactly. Okay. But I hope you understand that doesn't mean that whatever you say you'll get it, but it means that we'll take your opinion into consideration. Okay. So between now and the meeting, I'd like for you to think about what you need from those individuals who'll be at the group to make you feel safe and to want to engage in the discussion. I will. Do you have any other questions? Um, no, I don't think so. 
Okay, great. Well, I'll see you at the meeting. Okay. Great. Bye, Brianna. Bye. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm so glad we were able to get together today. Brianna, thank you so much for being here and being part of the team. Um, as I shared with you before, we're just here to make sure that we can express and celebrate your successes, address any worries that you may have, and make sure that we keep you as the focus of our meeting today. So thank you all for coming. Um, this is the Child and Family Team meeting. So I want to start by doing introductions. Um, if you all can go around and tell us your name, your um, relationship to Brianna, and your role, and then also include something, either a strength that you have or a unique expertise that you bring to this group. Um, I'll go ahead and start so I can model the introduction. I am Stephanie. I'm Brianna's social worker. We've been working together for the past two years. So my role is to facilitate this meeting. Um, but also be the one to make sure that we keep track of whatever action items we set up for this meeting, any goals that we set together, and then also to make sure I convene you all for these meetings and to make sure we stay on track working towards our goals. Um, a unique thing about me is I have a gift of gab, so I like to establish relationships and work with others. Hi, I'm Brianna, and I don't really know why I'm here today. Hi, I'm Eileen. Oh, wait, one second, Eileen. Sorry, Brianna, can you give us a strength of yours? Well, um, I just learned to play a new song on the guitar. That's great. Thanks, Brianna. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Eileen. Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm Brianna's mother. And um, I think what I bring is a sense of family history. That's great. Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm Eileen's older brother. I'm also the uncle of Brianna. Um, Brianna used to live with me and my wife for about two years. Uh, then we lost touch. I'm hoping that Eileen, I can come back into Eileen and Brianna's life again and, and rebuild our relationship. Um, like, like Eileen just shared, I, I bring a sense of what our family history is. That's great. I'm Viola. Um, I'm Brianna's casa. Um, uh, we've been together the last two years, and I'm hoping she'll be my last. Uh, she was my first, and I'm hoping she'll be my last, meaning that I am definitely committed to being with her lifelong, um, even after she leaves the foster care system. I want you to know that I'm committed to you, and I want the team to know that I'm committed to Brianna. Um, one of the strengths I bring, um, I'm retired. So I have a lot of time on my hands. So anytime Brianna needs me, I can be there. Hi, my name is Jack and I work for Behavioral Health Services and what we're trying to do is to work with child welfare to make sure that the services that are needed are being provided. Uh, one thing that I bring to the table is that I used to work in special education and so I have a certain understanding of those needs. I'm looking forward to being part of the team. I'm Alex. Uh, I've been uh, Brianna's therapist for the last uh, eight months and um, something that uh, I enjoy that I think is brought to the table here is exercise. Um, that's something that Brianna knows and something that I've been trying to get her to integrate into her life. I think that's something that would be good for her to integrate into her everyday life. Great, well thank you everyone. Um, I wanna check in with you Eileen first. Just I'm very th thankful that you're here today even though our focus is to uh, think about Brianna and her goals moving forward, forward towards her life. We also wanna be acknowledge you and appreciate that you're here and, and wanna know kind of how we can better support you and you and Brianna building, rebuilding your relationship with Carlos. So I'm happy that the three of you are here. So the strength that you and Carlos mentioned is perfect. That's the reason why we want to have child and family teams because only Eileen, Carlos, and Brianna really can bring that family history to the table. You all have your own cultural identity and that is a strength that, that you guys bring that's unique because you're an expert on your own family. So. Thank you again for being here, and thank you all for doing your introductions. So I want to talk a little bit about the purpose of our meeting today. And so as I said before, the goal of a child and family team is to really look at how we build up natural supports for families once the professionals are out of the picture. So what we call natural supports are your friends and family, and then your formal supports would be your professionals that are at the table. So the goal is that once the professionals are done providing their services, the family is a core, and they're able to have that natural support system to sustain them once all the professionals are out of their lives. So that, that's our goal today, is to establish that team. 
So what we want to do today is look at, at what the worries are. So looking at different things going on with Brianna, such as it could be mental health, challenges, placement, anything that we're worried about, we'll get to talk about that today. But I'd like to start off by looking at Brianna's strengths and from there look at what's working, kind of what's not working so well, and then look at how we can come up with solutions to address those things. And then hopefully by the end of our meeting, we'll come up with an action plan with some concrete steps to move forward, looking at our larger goals of the team, okay? So does anyone have any questions? All right. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of our meeting today, all the brainstorming and all that, I want to talk about group agreements. So group agreements are what things that we agree to to help us work together today. So how we're going to communicate and conduct ourselves. Um, group agreements are there to help us communicate and work effectively as a group. So it can kind of be whatever you want to focus on. So it can be small agreements like turn your cell phones off or bigger agreements like I don't want to feel judged, okay? So I'm gonna just kick it back to the group. What do you guys want to, how do you wanna to work together today? Well, I don't wanna talk about what's been happening. I feel like I'm old enough now to talk about my future and I think that I'm ready. Okay, so how would you frame that? Um, well, people tend to say that I do this or I do that and I'm not doing it right or I should be doing it this way and nobody listens to what I have to say. So what it sounds like I'm hearing is you want to feel like you're heard right. without being judged. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so how would you word that? Um, let me express myself. I like that, express myself. Mm -hmm. How about everyone else? Can we agree to that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think that we should keep Brianna as the focus. Um, she said a little while ago uh, that she didn't know what was going on or why she was here, and I think it's really important that Brianna know and understand everything that's going on. Okay, Eileen, do you have any thoughts on group agreements? Um, as you know, I've been sober for two years now, and I don't think we need to bring up the past. I agree. I don't think we need to rehash why my wife and I decided to step away from Brianna's life when we did. Exactly. I think that um, talking about my past mistakes is not going to be helpful. Okay, so how would you word that? How about um, stay in the present and focus on the solutions? Okay, how does that sound for you, Eileen? I like that. Anything else? I have one, uh, that all members of the team are committed to the team and we follow through. I think it's important that Brianna know that we've all come together for her. Okay, so be committed to the team. I would like to see us be open-minded. Open-minded, so give me a little bit more about that. What does that mean? Um, I think that, well, when we hear suggestions from Brianna, Eileen, Carlos, and Viola that we don't automatically dismiss them, because we can't really do the, the suggestions. So listen and be more open-minded so that we can explore other options. Okay, okay, so meaning that whatever somebody suggests, it doesn't mean that that's what we're gonna end up with at the end of the day, but be willing to give everybody's suggestions good time and consideration. That's good? Okay. Okay. Brianna, is there anything that's missing here? Um, if I or anybody else has to step out, that we do not talk about that person until they come back into the room. So no talking about somebody when they're not in the room. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I have another one. To be respectful. It's okay to disagree, but to do so in a respectful way. So is that, is that everything? Manage your technology. Okay, how would you word that? You know, uh, just be present in this meeting. We're just here for an hour with each other. There's no emergency that can't wait till we're done. Okay, is that a commitment we can all make? Yeah, I think we can do that. Well, this is great, an impressive list of agreements. Can we all agree to what we've identified here? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Okay, and if for some reason we trip up, forget the agreements, we can always just remind ourselves, check back in with each other. And this is a fluid list, so we can always add more agreements or remove any. 
Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, since this is our first child and family um, team meeting, uh, will the group agreements uh, be something that we bring to the subsequent meetings, or is, are we going to come up with a new list every time we meet? That's a great question. So what I'll do today is I'll, I will type up these group agreements and the action plan and goals that we come up with today, send that out to all of you, and then when we have our subsequent meetings, we'll have the group agreements posted. So what I want to talk about now is what we call desired outcomes. Basically, by the end of this meeting, what would we hope to have discussed and decided upon? So Brianna, what would you like for us to focus on today? Um, well, I want to go home with my mom because right now I really, I'm just feeling trapped and I want to feel free and I want to go and finish school. Okay. All right. So we can talk about that, uh, what it would take for you to go home with your mom, and then we'll also talk about school. I'm just going to write that down. I think that's great, Brianna, but I think we need to have multiple options on the table. I mean, you and I have talked about exploring other placement options just in case things with your mom don't work out. Maybe even exploring what it would take for you to go back with Uncle Carlos and Aunt Diana. Well, we'd have to see about that. Your aunt and I would need to talk more. True, but I, I think we need to talk about it as well. Well, remember, we agreed we'd be open to everyone's suggestions and allowing each other to express themselves. You're right. It's, it's just that um, my wife isn't here and she would need to be a part of that discussion. That's a good point. That's true. I just think we need to have several options on the table. Remember last time we went and had our nails done? You know, you and I just talked about having a backup plan just in case things need to shift in the future. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I do like having options. You know, I just don't like how I was pushed into homes in the past. I feel like I should have a say in where I should live. Okay, good. Eileen, do you have anything you want to focus on today? I really want what's best for Brianna. Um, I really want her to come home with me, and I've been working really hard on being sober and staying sober. Okay, so you share the same goal as Brianna of her wanting to come home. Yes. So what do you think about the option of having a backup plan? Is that something you'd be open to? It depends on what the options are. I mean, if she's going to go home with my brother and his wife and I could go and visit her, then I would be okay with that. But if it means she would go somewhere else, I'm not sure I, I would be okay with that option. It really depends, and I, I just want her to be comfortable and safe, and I want what's best for her. Okay, so what other thoughts? What else do we want to focus on today? Well, I, I think that before we even start talking about whether Brianna is going to go home to live with her mother or go stay with her Uncle Carlos, that we're going to want to talk about increasing the time that Brianna and Eileen are spending together. Eileen's been sober for two years. Brianna's older now. Uh, I think that we want to talk a bit more about maybe moving towards some more unsupervised visits or maybe even looking at some more overnight stays first. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and actually, I, I, I'd like to see if it's possible that we can start doing some family therapy sessions where we can get Brianna and Eileen in together. Brianna's been doing really well, uh, but I'd like to see if we can get Eileen a part of our process. Yeah, so we can talk about that when we get to specific interventions. Yeah. yeah along with that, um, maybe we can help Brianna identify some positive relationships. She's a great girl and really fun to interact with. Maybe we can help her identify some uh, good qualities of other people that she hangs out with. Okay, so if, if I'm hearing you correctly, I think we want to look at how to build a support system for Brianna. So looking at the folks that are in her life now, who can have a positive influence and help her get to her overall goals. Um, and so with that, along with the um, support system, we'll also start talking about, uh, look at the worries, things we're con concerned about, and then look at how we built that support system for Brianna. So Brianna, if we talk about everything that we've gone over, so we have placement, visitation plan, family therapy, would we have addressed everything you wanted to discuss today? Yeah, I, I think we would. Okay, so let's talk about strengths. We can start by talking about Brianna's strengths, and then I also like to hear about what's going well for you, Eileen, and talk a little bit about your recovery. Um, to ground our discussion on strengths, I think we should focus on those strengths of Brianna that would help advance her in a positive direction. She's really good at picking up music. She has learned to play the guitar so well, and, and she's enjoying her piano lessons. Yeah, uh, Brianna is actually really good at uh, coming to me when she's feeling sad or frustrated, which is great, and um, she gets good grades. When I get to spend time with Brianna, we have great conversation. We laugh a lot. She has a great sense of humor. 
Okay, good. So what other strength do we see in Brianna? Oh, people like her and they like spending time with her. She's a great person. That's great. Brianna, do you see any strength that we haven't listed? No. Okay, Eileen, so what about your strengths? Uh, well, I've been working hard on my sobriety and I've also been following Dr. Laura's advice on not getting into a relationship when having young children and I think that helps me stay focused. Um, and when I've had visitations with her, I haven't missed any of them. Well, that's good to hear. I think another strength that you have, Eileen, is that you reunified with your daughter. When she was born, you got yourself clean, and you raised her for the first seven years of her life. So that's the true strength. So let's talk about what we're worried about. What are our worries? Well, even though I've been sober for two years, it's still a struggle. Um, we've been getting along really well, but there's times when she gets angry and she says that I abandoned her, and that really hurts. I think that I'm worried that she doesn't have supportive friends. Uh, the people that she's hanging out with just don't seem to be supporting her and doing her homework and paying attention in school. She's also been hanging out with her boyfriend more and more and they're smoking a lot and that really worries me. I'm worried about Brianna's anger. Um, when she was living with me and my wife, she got so angry that she pushed my wife and my wife was seriously injured. Uh, since I've been back in Brianna's life, I still see that when she gets frustrated. She still bursts out verbally. Um, I even heard that she got suspended from school for punching a teacher. I too am worried about Brianna's anger, and I blame myself for that. When she was younger, my boyfriend and I, we used to fight a lot. Sometimes it was verbal, other times it was physical, and the cops were called at times as well. I know that a lot of the times when we were fighting, we were high. And um, I just, I'm really sorry that I put you through that. Well, I'm worried about Brianna. Um, she struggles with some depression, and I think she uses marijuana as a crutch to deal with that depression. But if you look at all she's been through, she has developed some really great coping skills, like playing the piano or playing the guitar uh, or exercising. But I think there are more things that she can do, like working out or playing music instead of getting high with her boyfriend. I'm worried about her depression as well. I know that I abandoned her. She lost her grandmother when she was living with her. And then she went to go live with my brother Carlos and they threw her out. Okay, well let's remember, we said we'd be in our conversations, Eileen, we'd be respectful. And then Carlos, we also said we would allow each other to express themselves. Uh, yeah, right, but I feel like I'm being blamed. I mean, for the sake of my marriage, I had no other options. Brianna, you know that I'm sorry, right? I know, I'm Carlos. But we just couldn't do it anymore. Okay, so do we need to add another agreement? Uh, yeah, like what? Uh, no blaming? Well, I mean, we want to keep our, our agreements positive. Uh, something about being in the present. Well, I guess we kind of said it before. We'll stay in the present, not focus on the past. Yes, right. Okay, so let's talk about worries. What are we worried about? Um, well, I'm worried that because I'm in a group home that I'm not going to be allowed to do things and that's frustrating because say I do want to go to the gym or I do want to do a certain activity, I'm not going to be allowed to. Okay, so now let's talk about the services and supports that are in place currently for Brianna. Well, I think that right now Brianna's doing really well with therapy. She comes to seek me out when she's feeling frustrated and instead of getting into fights or arguing, um, you know, she comes to me and we talk things through. Um, I would like to respect her request not to rehash the past, but um, I do think that family therapy would be really great at this point to identify some of the more underlying issues. Okay, so Brianna, what's your thoughts on therapy? Do you find it helpful? Do you think it should continue? Well, um, I know that there's a lot of things I need to work on. Like, I know I get angry, and I know that there's better ways to work on that, but I do not like group therapy because I don't like talking about my problems in front of other girls and giving them crap to talk about me and spread my business around. So I don't do group therapy, but my therapist is really nice and he listens to me, so I think we could talk about me and my mom. Okay, so it sounds like individual is something we want to continue? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything in individual therapy that you want to focus specifically on? Um, well, I want to try and um, control myself better without the use of medication. So you're on medication now? Yes. Do you know what you're taking and why you're taking it? Uh, yeah, they told me I had to take it. Uh, I take Prozac in the morning and then Circle at night. Okay. Um, do you think the medication is helpful? 
um, sometimes, but sometimes I still feel the same way I do when I take it, and sometimes it makes me feel weird. Okay, so it sounds like the medication is helpful, but maybe we need to look at changing the type of medication? Yeah, we can take a look at that. So, um, are there any other supports out there? We mentioned something about music. Oh, yeah. Um, well, Viola got me a guitar, and I really like playing music. Um, my boyfriend's been also teaching me how to play chords. She's learned how to play the guitar very easily. Maybe we can look into getting her some formal lessons. Yeah, I'd like that. Um, I just really, really, really want to learn how to play because it's important to me. Okay, well, we can look at that. I, mean, I know we partner with different agencies. Uh, yeah, sometimes schools have good music programs. Uh, community centers offer lessons. Maybe we can look into some of those. Okay, good. So let's talk about um, next steps. So far I have down that individual therapy is a yes. We do want to continue it. Brianna, I appreciate that you were able to, to narrow down a focus for your therapy and looking at, you know, how to manage your frustrations better so you don't blow up or get into additional trouble. Um, I also have down that we're going to continue with medication, um, but it also looks like there's some issues with side effects, so we may want to look at evaluating the medication. Um, and Brianna, you also expressed um, being open to being off the medication. But I think we need to kind of reevaluate that and look at if that is an option. And if we do do that, how do we have her wing from the medication in a safe manner? And we also want to look at doing it in a timely manner. Uh, as she may be moving placements, uh, there's going to be a lot of change. It may not be the right time to change the medication. So we just want to make sure that uh, we keep that in mind and that things are stable when the time comes. That's a good point, Jack. Um, Eileen, I want to stop and check in with you. Um, how do you, how are you feeling about the discussion so far? Is there anything that you want us to go over that we missed? Well, yeah, because we've been talking about Brianna's medication, but over there under outcomes, we discussed Brianna coming home. Okay, so let's talk about that right now. Um, so what steps do we need to take to look at the progression of Brianna being able to come home? I think Brianna and Eileen need to go to family therapy. Uh, Eileen and Brianna, how does that sound to you? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, family therapy is something we can get started on right away. We can start looking at times where we can bring Eileen into sessions. Great. So what else needs to happen next? What else needs to start? Um, from the agency perspective, Eileen, you were gone for some time and now you're back. You've been having supervised visits with Brianna, which have been going well. Um, normally for child welfare, when we look at the progression of visits, you start with supervised visits, then you go to unsupervised, and then eventually overnights. Um, at this point, I think we are progressing well, but I don't think we're ready to get to unsupervised visits yet. Why? I don't understand why we can't have unsupervised visits. I think I'm old enough now to be able to take things upon myself and do what I want. I don't know what it's going to take for us to have unsupervised visits where we can actually go out and do things. Look, well, my, my concern is that there is still tension in the relationship between you two. So I think it really makes sense that we start working on the family therapy session. Yeah, I agree with Alex. I have the same worry. I think that family therapy is a good start, but with the goal of moving towards unsupervised visits, uh, I, I don't think we're there yet. I think we can look at increasing the number of visits. Well, I mean, I think from my, from my perspective, I don't have any worries around going to unsupervised visits because I feel like the visits are going well. You're at all the visits with the exception of some disrespectfulness and tension that happens. I feel like I don't have any safety concerns. I feel like Brianna is, is well aware when she's having issues, she can reach out to Alex or Viola and I don't have any concerns that Eileen would hurt Brianna. So we don't have any safety concerns in that regard. Um, so I think at this point we could probably look at doing a TDM and, and revisit your visitation plan. Why can't we do these decisions here? Well, because I can't make decisions independently of my supervisor, so I would need her to be here too. <sighs> okay. So let's review next steps and action items. So I know we said we're going to continue with individual therapy with Alex. And Brianna's going to focus on how to work, manage her frustration without getting in trouble. Um, it, do we, should we put a timeline to that, an end date? Well, I think that's something that I'll work with independently uh, with Brianna. Okay, great. And I know we also talked about family therapy. Right, yeah. Within the next week, I'll be able to get Eileen and Brianna into a session, and we'll discuss how often we need to meet. Uh, but I think, I'm guessing we're probably going to meet once a week. Okay, how does that sound to you, Eileen and Brianna? It's fine. It's fine. Good. Okay, and then we also talked about medication, um, needing to reevaluate side effects. Now, I could look into getting a medical evaluation for Brianna, see if we can get that done by the end of the week. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. And the music lessons? I can do that. Okay, great.
Um, I can help with that too. If you could get me the information, I can look into it as well. When do you think you can get that to me? Oh, I can do that within two weeks. Okay, great. And then we also talked about increasing visits. I'll go ahead and take on that one. I'll set up a meeting with my supervisor um, to do a TDM. It's based on availability, but we can definitely get it done in the next two weeks. Um, let's see, are we missing anything? Mm, oh, I know one. I'm gonna type all this up and then also type the agreements and email it out to everybody who's here. So was there anything else we didn't go over? Okay, good. I think we have a good plan outlined. Was everyone present that need to be here today? Are we missing anyone from the group? Well, um, I think my wife should be here. Uh, I can talk to her and see about getting her to future meeting. Okay, good. Um, anyone else? Well, maybe your supervisor should be here. If your supervisor was here, then we wouldn't have to do an additional meeting. Okay, I'll look into that. Anything else? Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll start wrapping up with what we call a plus delta. So I'll start with Brianna. So on a scale of zero to 10, zero being this was the worst meeting ever, I never wanna come back. 10 being this was the best meeting I wanna have every day for the rest of my life. Where would you fall on the scale? Um, I would say I fall about an eight. An eight, okay, yeah. that's good. Um, so what do we need to do for the next meeting and get you to a nine? Um, well, this meeting, um, I felt like I had more control than I have in the past and I felt like I was really listened to and that made me feel really important. Good. So at the next meeting, how can we get you to a nine? Uh, say yes to everything I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so to everyone, what went well today? Just like Brianna said, I feel like I was listened to. Yeah, you did a good job of facilitating. I really like the way you reminded us of our group agreements. I like how we were able to talk openly about everything. I like how the meeting was set around my availability. I appreciate that. Good. Anything else? Okay, so what upgrades do we want to see for the next meeting? Well, as we talked about before, maybe having your supervisor here would make it so that we didn't have to have another meeting. Okay, what else? Okay, good. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming today and your willingness to participate. Um, let's look at our calendars and find out when we're going to have our next meeting.